Thank you. Well, it's a great honor to be here to present the Burgess Shale, Cambrian Paleontological Record from British Columbia, Canada. Um, how does this thing work here? Oh, there we go. So here we see uh, a group of hikers in the classic Burgess Shale locality of the Walcott Quarry, Yoho National Park, uh, learning about the Burgess Shale from a Parks Canada guide. Um, oh, I'm missing a slide. There was a picture on the other side, which is not there now. Um, so, characterized by exceptional soft tissue preservation, the Burgess Shale contains the most complete fossil record of Cambrian, Wuliu, and marine ecosystems. So we're looking at middle Cambrian. Uh, we use 506 million years uh, in age, although I understand from some discussions this week, uh, based on detrital zircons, that might be getting younger, so we'll see in the future. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors for this paper, Jean-Bernard Caron from the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada, and Bob Gaines from Pomona College, California, United States. The Burgess Shale is located within the western province of British Columbia, Canada, uh, illustrated here within uh, Yoho, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> Yoho and Kootenai National Park. Uh, this darker line in the middle is the continental divide in the uh, western Canadian Cordillera with Banff National Park in Alberta on the right. Uh, the symbols show some of the important Burgess Shale fossil localities, including the historic sites of Walcott Quarry and Mount Stephen, as well as some of the more recent sites, uh, another Mount Stephen site here, and Marble Canyon in Kootenai National Park here. The Burgess Shale is located within the Canadian Rocky Mountain Fold Thrust Belt. This is sort of a typical picture. This is Mount Burgess here in the foreground in the village of Field, British Columbia, in the valley bottom with the western main ranges of the Canadian Rocky Mountains in the background. And more specifically, the Burgess Shale lies within a, a thick sequence of um, carbonate platform and uh, siliciclastic rocks. And this illustrates more specifically the Burgess Shale is within the Stephen Formation Shales. And they consist of a thin facies shown here, the Waputik member, and a thick facies shown here. Uh, bounded by two thick carbonate platform units, the Cathedral Formation and the Eldon Formation. And so those represent, uh, the thin facies represents deposition on a shallow continental platform, and the thick facies represents deposition outboard of the platform margin in the outer detrital belt. So this is illustrated with this uh, schematic di diagram here. The thin, thin Stephen would be in here and the thick Stephen out here. And the good Burgess Shale fossils, the really rich sites, are associated with this thick Stephen uh, close to this break. So, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I just wanted to point out. So this is, uh, this is the thin Stephen right through here bounded by the cathedral limestone and the Eldon limestone above. So in terms of the taphonomic model, um, there's really three factors that we need to think about. One is proximity to a pronounced break in the paleo-marine uh, topography. And that was termed uh, the cathedral escarpment by the early workers, where this break was near vertical and perhaps represented a, a platform collapse margin. Uh, recent research has shown that it's, it's not always vertical. It's sometimes a more gently sloping surface, as shown here for the Marble Canyon site. And this uh, is from Marble Canyon, and you see some of the soft sediment deformation characteristic of deposition on a sloping surface. And then secondly, there's uh, one theory uh, promoted by uh, Bob Gaines, is that, that you see transport of material off the platform across that, across that uh, topographic break into anoxic waters, but um, that's still under debate. There's uh, definitely, with some of the soft tissue uh, preservation in the Burgess Shale, there's um, clearly burrows, um, trace fossils, so that there appears to be oxygen. So whether or not we're somewhere above this anoxic boundary is, is still under debate. 
but there seems to be a sweet spot here where the really rich fossil the deposits of the Burgess Shale against this uh, marine topography seem to occur. And on the thin Stephen, you get some fossils, but you don't get the diversity or the abundance of fossils as you do within the thick Stephen. And then a third feature that seems to be important is um, carbonate cements that get precipitated on the bed surfaces uh, after that uh, uh, event bed deposition. And this slide just shows uh, one of the rich fossiliferous layers from Walcott's quarry. And you'll see by the weight percent of calcium carbonate, these top layers are enriched in calcium carbonate um, relative to the fossil bearing shale. Um, this is a polished slab and this is an x-ray photo uh, photograph. In terms of the description of the importance of the Burgess Shale, it's really about a couple of things, but mainly, as most of us are probably aware, it's known for its exquisite preservation of mainly soft-bodied organisms and a wide diversity of animal groups represented from sponges to chordates, uh, also cyanobacteria. And the quality of pres preservation is, is so um, impressive that detailed ana anatomical reconstructions can be gained from these fossils and um, neural tissues, embryos, um, lots of these important features in understanding early evolution of animals are evident within Burgess Shale fossils. So that really informs our history of uh, early evolution shortly after the Cambrian radiation. This slide just shows a collection of a range of some of the Burgess Shale Fossils, we have um, some arthropods, Lee and Coilia, and Anomalocaris here, uh, a number of sponges, um, this one, Voxia, um, these two over here, different sponges. These are mollusks, Mollusonia and Wewaxia, Chitignas, a um, couple of uh, unknown affinity or uh, problematic animals here. Uh, a nice, beautifully preserved polychaete here, and uh, a comb jelly. And this important one that uh, Isabel referenced, Bikaya, one of the first chordates. So why is that exquisite preservation so important? Well, just a couple of examples. So this is an Amalocaris canadensis was referenced uh, before. But this was first described from uh, two different fossils, which were thought to be two different animals. And this was thought to be a headless shrimp when it was first described. And this was thought to be a jellyfish. And then in, in the 1980s, Harry Whittington was dissecting a, uh, an arthropod from the Burgess Shale. And he discovered both of these heretofore uh, separate species attached to the head of the arthropod he was dissecting, which uh, led him uh, led Whittington and Derek Briggs to publish an Amalocaris as, as uh, one complete animal. And then this was the first complete specimen found in the 1990s. Here's the appendage here. You don't see the mouth parts in, in this one. Um, a second example, Metaspergina walcotti. Uh, a couple of these specimens were collected by Charles Walcott in the 1900s, but it wasn't well preserved, so it was unclear what it was until a uh, large collection of well-preserved specimens were collected in 2012 and 2014 in Kootenai National Park. This is just one section here. And that allowed Simon Conway Morris and Jean Bernard Curran to describe this as the second uh, chordate from the Burgess Shale. And this specimen here clearly shows the eyes, the muscle bands down the body, uh, some internal organs here, and the nodal cord running down here, which places it within the chordates. And finally, um, the mandibulates have been traced to the Middle Cambrian Burgess Shale with this species, Tokumia catalepsis, uh, collected in Kootenai National Park as well. The second feature of the Burgess Shale that is really quite important is just the sheer abundance of fossils, the, the species diversity, and the multitude of sites within the Stephen Formation that can be studied uh, and uh, allow some qualitative or quantitative research to be conducted into the uh, paleoecology of Cambrian marine ecosystems. This study just shows four different locations within a 40-kilometer strike length 
and four different stratigraphic levels within the Stephen Formation, um, which helps shed light on the spatial and temporal variation of Cambrian ecosystems. I've got to speed up. So scientific tradition, they were Burgess Sale fossils first. Uh, locals referred to stone bugs on Mount Stephen, and that brought Richard McConnell of the Geological Survey of Canada, made a collection, included uh, this, this thing here, which uh, Joseph Whitey used, published in 1892 in the Canadian Record of Science as this headless shrimp, but we now know as part of uh, Anomalocaris. Uh, that brought Charles Walcott to um, Mount Stephen in 1907, and then in 1909 he came and explored across the valley. This is Charles Walcott in what we now call Walcott Quarry. And in his field book of the period, he says we're in the collecting in the Stephen found, formation, found some remarkable phyllopod crustaceans. We see Morella here and Waptia here. And the next day, he finds a group of sponges in situ. So we know he found the outcrop. He ended up collecting 65,000 specimens. Then in 1930, uh, Percy Raymond from Harvard opened a new quarry, Raymond Quarry. Uh, Geological Survey of Canada came in 66 and 67, and they brought Harry Whittington with him and made another collection. And then Whittington and his students, Conway Morris and Briggs and others, started to really understand the significance of what the Burgess Shale fossils had to tell us. That work continued into the latter half, latter part of the um, 20th century, to the point that we had um, Walcott's quarry expanded significantly. Raymond's quarry, uh, an out section of Raymond's quarry, and then another quarry here called the Emanuela quarry in the main uh, Burgess Shale beds. <clears throat> and that work continues to this day. Royal Ontario Museum under the direction of Jean-Bernard Caron has been coming back since 2008 every couple of years. This is uh, one of their camps in um, Kootenai National Park. The Stephen Formation runs down through here. And this is a site excavated just this year, August um, 2022. And so far, they've discovered three significant new biotas from the Burgess Shale with this work. So there's lots more to be learned still. Main arguments for IEGS recognition. Well, it's really the most well-known Cambrian Lagerstadt. It's protected within national parks and since 1980, a World Heritage Site. Um, there's really no other Cambrian sites with the same abundance of soft-bodied uh, fossils, the species diversity, and the multitude of sites with which to do comparative work. And really, it's uh, known as the global reference for Burgess Shale-type fossils. It also um, has a prolific publication record in the scientific literature, but also in more um, popular science writing, such as these examples from 1989, uh, general Treatment in Nature in 2009, and a uh, more recent uh, paper in Science in 2018. And that really helps to um, understand the enduring presence of the Burgess Shale within the public imagination. <clears throat> so with that, I'll just point out Burgess Shale quarries Oop. right here. <laughs> and say merci beaucoup. Thank you very much.